friends welcome back thank you so much for joining me today we're going to create a trio of fall inspired cards but before we get into that project I do want to share with you an update if you didn't catch it in our previous video we did decide on a start date for the 13 days of Halloween series I know you all look forward to that I've gotten a lot of people asking even after we shared the date on the other video so I will tell you again here it is September 24th that's a Thursday we'll be at 7 p.m. and we have a lot of really amazing projects lined up to share with you for 13 days straight lots of holiday inspiration for your Halloween so make sure you set your timer for that so that you can join me for our 13 days series and let's get on to this project now usually when i'm sharing the supplies i'm using for my project in my videos i will share a full collection and that is because i typically pick them up that way or I get them as an allotment from a design team from a brand but for today's project I'm doing it a little bit differently I did pick up a sheet of cut aparts and I'm going to pair them with papers that do not come from the collection so this is the hello autumn it is the give thanks boards and this is from Cardabella. I was absolutely in love with all these little chalkboard images. There's a variety of sizes, uh, all kinds of different sentiments. They're all really sweet and they have a border that looks like wood grain. So I knew I would be able to get a lot of use out of these for different size projects and just cut them apart. I cut them leaving a little bit of the white border so that they would look more like actual ephemera and then I paired them with these patterns that I picked up from Hobby Lobby so they had a lot of really fun uh, fall inspired patterns I love them this one is actually from authentic paper so that's interesting to me I noticed that when I flipped over the page but they also have these really sweet pumpkins that have the uh, plaids and the different colors. This one is the blue color and that is really new for this last couple of years and I love that addition for uh, the non-traditional decorators that like more than just the browns and oranges. So I really love this page. There was a couple of sheets that had some wording on it. This is a really nice all over pattern and it just has uh, different sentiments for Thanksgiving or fall. A second plaid here, I didn't wind up using these two because I thought they might be too large for the size of card I was working with, but I do like them and I will be using them soon. So look forward to some projects created with these, but it's just a little bit of a different scale and so that didn't work for today. But once again, it does have that pretty blue in there and all of these rich warm colors paired with it. And then I did bring in this wood grain. This is not from Hobby Lobby, just from my stash. I like to pick them up when I find new ones. I really love to work these into my projects because I think it adds a uh, faux texture and a lot of warmth and it helps to, uh, bring my projects together today. I'm using the same background for all three cards so that way they'll all look like a nice coordinating set. So I am pairing my journal cards from Cartabella with my paper from Hobby Lobby. Okay so I think I'm going to work on these cards separately but just remember that my backgrounds are all the same and I have finished all of the insides with the coordinating pattern paper. I'll come back in and add a section for sentiment to be added but for right now I can just finish the front. So I'm using a nice brown um, cardstock and that's just my matting. I'm using that all throughout and I've matted that with my usual eighth of an inch border and I'm keeping everything nice and centered. For these I'm using all just double-sided adhesive tape for the paper layers that helps to reduce a little bit of the bulk for these smaller uh, sweet cards that are not quite as detailed. For this one I'm using that fun typography and I'm just going to add this right to that base layer. It has more of the matting 
on that so that it helps to keep these busy paper patterns separate. And here's where I'm going to bring in that beautiful uh, diagonal plaid. This one was the one from Authentic Paper, and I think it might have been from a Halloween collection, but I do like all of these colors together, and the scale is really perfect for a two size card. So I like it for larger cards as well, but this really seems to work so that you can enjoy the whole pattern, even if you cover up a portion of it. So I've got a doily here, and this is just cut from crisp white cardstock. It's a smaller scale than what I typically use, and this is going to help break up those patterns so that the focal image really stands out. I don't have a lot of surface on the background there to adhere tape to, so I'm just going to use my hot glue gun to adhere that. And so here is my first image from that cut apart sheet. And like I said, I left my border so it looks like ephemera, but look how cute that little squirrel is. And he's got himself a little acorn there. Also, this sentiment is a little less traditional, kind of whimsical even with the different kinds of fonts. And I really love that. So I'm putting this on. Here's the only dimensional paper layer I'm going to add. It's got foam spacers behind it so that I can build up a little dimension, but mostly this is going to be flat. It will fit in the A2 size envelope, but it will not ship uh, like regular traditional card. You're going to have to add a little bit of extra postage, but not a lot. I did ship a card this weekend and it had a bow on it and it was 55 cents. So I think less than a dollar will get this through the mail. Now, keeping on with the less dimensional embellishments, I'm going to add this little flower cluster. I created these with some scrap paper that I just had. I picked a pretty wine color and then this is kind of a pumpkin and it's not really like a stark orange but it is very vintagey looking and another thing I don't usually do is finish my flowers with buttons in the center but I thought that it really worked for this fall inspired card I did add a little bit of like green skeleton leaves here and then I switched out my usual loopy twine bows in white for ones in a more natural color just to go with our fall theme and then I've added some brown leaves instead of green and that creates a nice kind of curved arrangement. I can add that right here and it's just going to hug the bottom of my journal card. I'm calling that a journal card, but really I think it's just more of a cut apart because it isn't the traditional size. Um, and like I said, there was a lot of different shapes and sizes on there, so that will be nice for different kinds of projects. Okay, that will cover the bottom. To balance that, I want to include a bow. And this is just tied with some pretty metallic-y ribbon topped with more of the twine and a button. Before I add that though, I do want to include this pumpkin charm. So this is fall inspired. It is not Halloween. It doesn't have a jack-o'-lantern face on it. But it will add a nice little bit of sparkle in detail. So I just want to add that here and capture those tails between the card and the bow. And that is going to complete our first card. So as I mentioned, I am using the same card base, the same size, and the same um, base layer of that wood grain. So here's my second card. We're going to build that pretty much the same. So what I did was I got out those papers and I just cut my shapes from them so that I could use the same elements throughout and that would help them to be more coordinated. So here's my base done. So for this one I'm going to add my plaid banner shape and I did not use my dies for this. I just wanted this to be a longer, skinnier shape than what I had the die for. This is so easy though. You just cut the width and the height that you want and then fold it onto itself on the bottom and nip that little tail out so that you get that iconic fishtail or dovetail shape. And then I'm going to add it here. It's slightly off set. That helps me to line it up better from the side. And then I'm going to bring in that same typography or wording 
pattern and that's going to run the whole width of my card and I'm just going to bring that down a little bit here so that I can still enjoy a little bit of that plaid at the top. Now why this would work really well for you if you want to bring this to a crop or um, if you go to outings where you're crafting, you could definitely make all of your cards with a different look, but using the same elements throughout so that you only have to bring a small amount of supplies. Now I don't crop because I don't scrapbook often, but I do often take my crafty projects with us when we go to the lake. So we take our camper to the lake and we have a nice, um, table inside so I always bring a little something creative to do and this would be great because I don't have to bring all the supplies I could just bring some and then make lots of different projects with it so this one is the same flower arrangement and it's just a slightly different sentiment here it says give thanks and it has pie so that will be nice for this card and I've arranged the flowers the same for all three of these cards. So that was easy way to get them made quickly as I had the paper and the dies out. So I just made them in multiples. Same thing for my charms and my bows. They're all gonna be the same, so they'll match. I just wanna hold that on there and attach that the same as I have for my first one. So that completes my second card. Let's move on to the third one. Same base layers again with that pretty wood grain with the brown card stock going throughout. Everything is going to be centered. This time I'm bringing the larger fishtail banner shape in with the wording and this is going to be right in the center but further down from the top. And what I want to do is add that plaid to the top and that will just be a nice border. I'm using the cardstock border that is already there. I'm just lining that up. So now we've got a different arrangement of fishtail and plaid. So it will coordinate, but it doesn't match exactly. Here is my doily and I'm moving it over just slightly because I want to include a different orientation of the sentiment. So this is more of a profile, but it still has that same pretty wood grain and the chalkboard style sentiment. And these are all still going to be on those foam spacers. So here is that same flower arrangement going right to the corner. One last pumpkin and one last loopy bow for the top. So once I get these all lined up, you'll see how nicely they coordinate with each other. And then I thought to myself when I had these all arranged, um, it would be really sweet to hang these over a bit of jute twine and create like a small banner from them so you could use them as decor in your home. So these are the three cards that we made today. Now these are the A2 size cards and I did use the same elements throughout but I did want to show you that those cut apart make excellent full size cards. So here's one. I did bring in a little bit of a buffalo plaid because I wanted it to match the plaid in the pumpkins but I also coordinated that with the trim so I brought that all the way around so it all coordinates nicely and then I was inspired by the colors from the little truck for my flowers so I got that pumpkin color and that kind of bluish green I've made a large arrangement for the corner and have all of my usual dimensional layering I've picked up some pretty glittery stems from Hobby Lobby as well and worked in some of these spirals and I don't really know what these are called but it's very natural and it makes a nice filler for this larger arrangement. So I've got my usual buttons here and then a clip in a different size kind of fall inspired uh, tree charm in all of the uh, doilies that I usually like to add. I think this works really well for the slimline cards if you enjoy making those as I do. This isn't all going to fit where I have it on camera, but you can see that the taller, slimmer shape 
works really well in balance with this taller, slimmer card. So I just went ahead and did all of my usual layering. I put a couple of smaller arrangements so that they would balance, put the ribbon, put the charms, put the buttons on. And so this works really well for the slimline card as well. So for today, I made five cards but I think I'm gonna reserve the rest of those cut aparts to make one of my flip books. So be on the lookout for that coming up. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you check the description for links to all our social media sites. We have lots more projects there and we share things that don't make it into YouTube. So if you enjoy these, you might like those as well. So check those out, they're in the description below. If you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe and join my little crafty family. So hit the subscribe and also the notification bell. So you'll be alerted every time that we post new content. As always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.